All right, so here we have some very basic JavaScript code. We have a name of Connor and we constant log hi plus the name plus an exclamation mark. You can see in the output we get hi Connor. And this code is fine. And in a lot of languages, this is essentially how you would want to do this. But in JavaScript, this isn't very idiomatic, meaning it doesn't necessarily follow the standards of the language, the things that JavaScript developers are going to be expecting you to actually do. So the alternative is to say console.log and then to use a template literal. So this is going to be backticks. Then we would have high space. And then instead of having to concatenate the name, we can simply use a dollar sign and the curly brackets to use a variable inside of the string. And then we'll have the exclamation mark and the semicolon at the end. You'll see we still get high corner. So this works the exact same way. And why is this even better? Well, first of all, like I said, it's just sort of the idiomatic way to write this code meaning that it's sort of the standard in the language. It's the standard across the industry. Most of the time we tend to use template literals when we need to do some kind of concatenation. So instead of manual concatenation, we tend to do it this way. But why is this even the standard? Well, personally, I think it's for one, just a little bit more concise and more readable, but it's also less error prone because you can see here, for example, I had to add the space after high, and then I had to make sure not to have one here. And it's just a little bit complicated to make sure that you get things properly spaced out when you're doing concatenation versus when you do it this way, it is just much simpler. And all of the examples in this video are going to be similar to this in that there are two ways to do the same thing. And oftentimes the other way, so the original way that I'll show is something that you might do in other languages, but it's not going to be the idiomatic way in JavaScript. Meaning it's just not the way that you are expected to do things in JavaScript. It's not taking advantage of features of the language and it's not doing things in sort of the most JavaScripty way, if that makes sense. And oftentimes it feels like these things don't matter that much. And to be frank, they oftentimes don't, but writing this idiomatic code is truly a differentiator between somebody who's sort of a JavaScript beginner and somebody who's a more senior JavaScript developer. All right, next we have this user object with a name of Connor and a property is algo expert subscriber set to true, which by the way, if you're studying for your coding interviews, highly recommend becoming an algo expert subscriber or just give the free content a try to see if it's right for you. But anyways, next we have this function that logs out if a user is an algo expert subscriber. So we see constant log and we are using a template literal here. So we have the username is, and then if they're not an algo expert subscriber, we add the word not in, and then we have an algo expert subscriber. So you can see here we have Connor is an algo expert subscriber, but if unfortunately I was not a subscriber to algo expert, this would say Connor is not an algo expert subscriber. But of course, let's put this back to true. And again, this code is fine. We see it's using a template literal, which I think tends to be a little bit more idiomatic and a little bit more clean compared to using string concatenation. However, what we could do even better is to destructure this parameter. So instead of having this user object here, what we're going to do is remove that and we're going to have curly braces and we're going to just include the properties that we expect an object this takes in to have. And that's going to be the name and is algo expert subscriber. And then instead of doing user.name, we can simply do name. And instead of user.is algo expert subscriber, we can simply do is algo expert subscriber. Run this and it's going to work the exact same way. Now, is this something you need to do every single time a function takes in an object? Well, no, not necessarily. But personally, I do find that it feels a little bit more idiomatic to JavaScript. And it also just feels a little bit cleaner because we're not having to do user.name, user.is algo expert subscriber, or whatever object.property a bunch of times. And we can just use that property name. Additionally, I think it just makes it a little bit more clear as to what exactly this function is expecting because the parameters tell us what exactly we need instead of just having just user, which is a little bit more generic sounding. And because we're not using TypeScript here, we wouldn't know exactly what that is versus here. It's a little bit more clear what exactly it is that this function is going to be taking in and what it's expecting. All right, so here we have an array of numbers and we can see we're getting a new array of odd numbers. And we're doing this by iterating through the numbers, then checking if the number mod two is not equal to zero. If it is, then we're going to add to our odd numbers that current number. And then down here, we log out odd numbers and we can see we have negative five and three. And this code works, but it's just not a very idiomatic way to do things. It's not very JavaScripty, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do instead is remove all of this code and simply say nums.filter, which is a function that's going to iterate through our numbers, it's going to take in another function. So this function is going to have a number and we'll use an arrow function and simply say if the number mod two does not equal 
zero. So if that is the case, it's going to include this number in the filtered numbers, which is going to be odd nums. You can see if I run this, we get the same result. And this doesn't just apply to this case of filtering, but rather most iteration, we don't want to use traditional for loops. And instead we should be using the functions. So the for each function, the map function, the filter function, the reduce function, and all of the different functions that allow us to iterate through arrays in a functional way. That's not to say that you can never use a traditional for loop. There are times when you do want that traditional for loop and you'll get some benefits from it. But all else sort of held equal, JavaScript is a functional language and sort of the idiomatic way to write JavaScript. So the expected way that most people are writing JavaScript in the industry is to write JavaScript in the most functional way possible, or at least in a fairly functional way. And that's going to be to use these iteration functions rather than using things like traditional for loops. But of course there are exceptions to this. For example, if you need to return early out of the entire function from within a for loop, it's pretty difficult to actually do that using a functional loop and it's much simpler using a traditional for loop. So cases like that, you will want to just use the code that's going to be easier to write. Here we have a user object with an address in it and a state in that address. And we want to get the state, but we want to do it in a way where if say there was no address at all, we wouldn't throw an error. So this is going to give us undefined. The way we do this is by checking if the user is not null and the address on the user is not null, then get the user.address.state Otherwise we get undefined and this is going to work, but this isn't a very idiomatic way to write JavaScript and it's just not a very clean way to do things. So instead of doing all of this, what we can do is simply say user and then use optional chaining. So this is going to be question mark dot address question mark dot state. And if I run this, you can see we get Washington, but if say there was no address at all, now we get undefined. So this is going to do essentially the exact same thing, except for one, the code is much simpler and shorter, but for two, it's also going to be what we would consider to be much more idiomatic JavaScript. And this is more idiomatic because we are utilizing these features of the language in the way that they're meant to be utilized. Okay, so here we have a function called say hello, and it takes it a name and it says hello to the name. But if that name does not exist, we set it to be guest. And we do this using the nullish coalescing assignment operator. So this is an operator that essentially says, if this thing is undefined, then set it to this thing, or if this thing is null. So if either of those were the case, we set it to whatever value is on the right. And this in a way feels sort of like idiomatic JavaScript because we are using this feature of JavaScript. This is a pretty JavaScripty thing to be doing. And you can see it does work. So we have hello Connor, but if I was to get rid of this, we would have hello and then guest. But the problem with this is that this code is a little bit confusing to read and while it is sort of utilizing these JavaScript features, it's not a feature that actually gets utilized all that much. So some people might just be a little bit confused by it and there's just a simpler way to do this. So while it feels cool and advanced, it's not the best way to do things. It's not the most idiomatic way to do things. Instead, we can get rid of this entire line and come up here and simply add a default value. So we're going to say name is going to be equal to guest up here. And you can see we have hello Connor, but if we get rid of this, we would have hello guest. And while this might not use the coolest feature of the language, this is something that I think is easier to understand for most people. And it is actually sort of the more idiomatic way to do things because this is what you are much more likely to see people doing in industry. And I think this is the case for two reasons. One, it's just sort of clean code. It's easy to read and it's how we've done things for a while. But two, we don't want to be reassigning our parameter values. That can sort of just lead to a lot of issues. And it's something that tends to be considered an anti-pattern and not something that we want to be doing. But now JavaScript does actually have a lot of cool little tricks that you can use if you're preparing for coding interviews that can make you much more efficient in those interviews. So if you're curious about that, you should watch this video next.